Hmm. I got myself a new monitor. Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. Yes, this is not where I usually sit. I wanted to change things up a bit before all because I want to show you this my new 4K 32 inch monitor from Samsung. I got it for a really good price around that Black Friday, Cyber Monday time, that being $300. But before I get to what's behind me, let's first jump over to the past Matthew. Whoa, gotta love these cheesy transitions. I'm sorry, but my budget for special effects is non-existent. Anyway, the model in question is Samsung's, wait a second. LU32J590UQU. What a lovely name. Or in short, the UJ590 series or UJ59. This was one of the cheapest 4K 32 inch monitor on the market, which not only doesn't have a TN panel, but rather a VA1, and it does have a Visa mount too, which was a must have in my case. Why you ask? Well, one thing that I'm also going to do in this video is upgrading my monitor arms, since I will be putting this monitor above the AOC's 34 inch widescreen, which I already have. So I will essentially stack them up with using two Arctic products, their Z13 d Gen 3 arm and Z Plus One Pro Gen 3 add-on arm. Up until now, I've been using their older three monitor stand model for around four years, because back then I had three monitors, but since I ended up with just one over the last two years, this widescreen model, I got to a conclusion that I really need another display because it became really unpractical switching between my editing PC and test rig when I'm doing benchmarks, it would just take too much time, plus it would render my editing PC useless for doing something else on it while the tests were being done, and before all it was time for me to get a 4K display so I can do 4K testing for you. You know what, past Matthew, I like it here much better and no more cheesy transitions. That's why I started my search for a reasonably priced 4K monitor, which could be my secondary monitor for my test rig, which I have right next to me, over, over there, and for occasional multi-screen tasking for my main editing PC when I'm not benchmarking. Because of this, I didn't need anything super extra special, I'm not going to do any color correction on it, just for displaying documents, handling files and browsing. But compared to its brother, the U28D590D, which was five years ago one of the first cheap 4K monitors on the market, which actually didn't fare that good in reviews when it comes to picture quality, this newer UJ590 model which I have here told a different story while I was doing my research and hunt for such a display, which is why I went for it. It was definitely time to change things up a bit, get a second display and reconfigure my setup with new monitor arms, but more on that later on, let's get back to the display itself. Being a strictly budget oriented model, the build quality is nothing to talk about except just saying it's fine. The housing for it is made with that under fingers rough feeling plastic, with a hint of glossy on the side of the bezels. Speaking of that, it's pretty thin, just like on my existing display, nothing that will blow you out of the water, although I personally don't care that much about it, it's nice to have them thin, but I'm not going to look at the bezel, but rather at the screen. Going to the back side, in the left corner or right if you're facing the monitor from the display side, we have a single joystick for controlling the monitor's OSD. I personally like it, it's very easy to navigate through the menus using it. I just hope it won't fail on me that fast, cause it feels a bit fiddly. The menu itself is very simplified, your basic picture and feature controls can be reached quickly. There's not a lot of it though, of course besides one like the brightness, contrast and color control, you have other gimmicky features like the game mode, but other than that, that's pretty much it. I did have to manually turn on the LED power indicator of the monitor since it was turned off by default. For a second there I actually thought that the monitor came in broken. Moving to the opposite side of that, in this recessed area we have three video input options, two of them being HDMI's, one capable of receiving a 4K 60Hz input, that's the second HDMI 2.0 port, while the first one, HDMI 1.4 port, can only take 4K 30Hz. Besides them, my main choice here would be the DisplayPort 1.2 port, 4K 60Hz capable, especially since it supports FreeSync. Yes, this monitor besides picture and picture mode also supports free sync. Granted, the range isn't that big from 42 to 60 Hz at 4K, but hey, it's there. 
One mention though, I had a problem with the second 60Hz 4K HDMI connection. I couldn't get the game to scale full screen on a non-native resolution. I don't know if it's because of the graphics card or something related to the monitor itself, but on the display port connection it was working just fine. Tell me in the comments down below if you have any insight into this problem. Last but not the least, we have a barrel laptop type of power connector and for powering it up we have this small external power supply brick which can rotate its plug connection in case you need to mount it in a specific way. And yes, look at this engineering marvel, right-handed power connection for the monitor hanging like this upside down. Why? Because why not? Because why wouldn't you put extra strain on the connector end of the monitor together with the cable wire of the power brick? I feel like Samsung had some leftover power bricks from some kind of other product or they're just mass producing it in bulk altogether for something that needs a right angled power connector, so it's possible that they are using it across a range of products, including this monitor too. I did prop it and Jerry rigged it at first with electrical tape, thanks Jerry, but in the end I ditched this solution since the power cable is supported by the monitor's arm, so thankfully there is no strain on the cable nor the connector. Moving to the bottom, we get to the stand itself, which is pretty simple looking, yet kind of modernish. You just clip it on and that's that. It offers only tilt in terms of the adjustment, which is to be expected for a monitor that costs this much. And personally, I wasn't worried about it since I knew it was going on a monitor arm right away, but at least you will get some level of adjustment. The stand also has this hook-like thingy on the back, which serves the purpose of guiding and managing the cables coming to the monitor, one of which you'll get in the bundle, that being the 2 meter long HDMI cable. As I mentioned, this model carries a VA panel, so performance of it should be much better compared to a TN panel. As for now, I'm using a custom calibrated color profile, but I will be doing my own color calibration once I get a hold of Data Color Spider X Elite calibrator, which will soon be with me. So I will address that once again on this new and my main monitor, so be sure to subscribe for that one down the line. As for now, with what I can see here, the viewing angles are pretty good, there is no major color shift or loss of brightness with smaller angles. The vertical angle shift seems to be performing a bit better than the horizontal, which suits my case since the monitor is placed above me. The backlight clouding is somewhat noticeable, but overall the display is pretty evenly lit. There is no extensive backlight bleeding in isolated areas. The brightness levels seem to be okay, as well as its uniformity, nothing I can really complain about, while the display itself has a non-glossy finish, so reflections are minimal. In terms of the color reproduction, at first glance with this loaded color profile, it's definitely better than with the regular TN panel, but as I said, I will do a more in-depth look once I get the color calibrator so I can get all the data out. Although I don't have any measuring gear, the response time and input lag seems to be okay, at least in terms of what I can perceive, which is also confirmed by other reviewers, but on the other hand, I'm not planning to game on it anyway. That's pretty much it in terms of the monitor, let's now check out the new monitor arms which I'm going to use for both of them. As I said, these are the new Arctic monitor arms, the Z1 3D Gen 3 and the Z Plus 1 Pro Gen 3 add-on, which are very simplistic but yet effective alternative for replacing your original monitor stand. I'm really liking the new smaller footprint of the main Z1 3D Gen 3 stand, while it still keeps the 4 USB 3.0 ports which my older model had, and that's always a great feature to have, there's never enough USB ports. The installation was very easy and straightforward, they really made it as simple as possible with this new generation of their monitor arms, and the packaging sort of gives that away since everything is compact. There's few screws and allen keys involved, and the only thing I did a bit differently is that I switched up the monitor arms, I've put the 3D arm on the top since I will be moving that new 4K monitor around as needed, while the regular arm is on the bottom for my existing monitor. You're able to do this since the diameter of both carrying poles are the same, one just goes on to another as an extension using this adapter bracket, so you can switch your monitor arm configuration as I did here. A big pressure clamp on the bottom of the carrying base holds everything up against the table, and beside the data connection for the USB 3.0 hub, you will also need to provide additional power to those ports using this additional micro USB port, since they cannot all be properly powered over a single USB connection coming from the PC. 
The data cable is around 1.8 meters long, while the power cable is really short so you will have to get a micro USB cable of your own. Both arms come with few cable routing points, while the 3D model doesn't have any except one on the pole itself, since it can move around in any direction, you can even rotate it, so it's better that you provide it with a longer set of power and video cables, just so you can have more slack on them in case you really plan to move it around all the time. All in all, everything is really sturdy and well built, easy to operate, especially the 3D arm, you can move it around as you wish and it will stay put. Of course, this depends on the monitor's size and weight, but that's easily adjustable on the 3D arm itself. This one can take up to 38 inch monitors with up to 8 kilograms of weight, while the add-on is capable of carrying up to 49 inch monitors and 15 kilograms of weight, while both also having the 75 and 100 millimeter visa mount support. So after all of this is done, how am I liking it? Well, it's actually pretty awesome. To be honest, I don't know why it took me so long to put a second monitor above the main one, it's like it never crossed my mind for some reason. Using these Artix arms, especially the top add-on, was one of the cleanest solutions for my setup since I didn't have any extra room left on the sides of the table. I know that some of you out there probably won't like this kind of setup and the angle of the monitor, but I had to go this route since there's basically no space left. On the other hand, I won't be looking at that top display all the time, maybe like 20% of it, since it's here to monitor my hardware benchmarking or to be an occasional helping hand, the second display for my editing PC. As for the monitor, the UG590 series does its job really good. Does it have flaws? Yes, it has, but again, it's really hard to beat it at this price point, and it hits just the right spots in terms of what I need, and in the end, that's what it's all about when buying something. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, please take a second to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps a lot, and if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below, so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys!